Hey guys, Pablo with BND, and today's Reddit Pro Revenge is titled Horrible Bosses. But before we start, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the notifications bell for more content coming up every other day. And also, I want to give a shout out to Reddit Rocket. I'll leave his link on the description below. You guys should check his channel. He's doing some great work. So let's start with our video. Boss wouldn't pay me the money I earned so I had his company shut down and other screw you moments. Last year, I started work for a local plumbing company that seemed promising, would pay top dollar to employees for good old fashioned labor. So I signed my W-2 and went on my way. Seems legit, right? I started out making an hourly wage, was given my own work van and was offered a work cell phone. However, if you use your personal cell phone, the owner of the company would pay your bill because you're using your own phone. How neat is that? Fast forward a month or two, I was forced to make commission based off of every job and didn't have a say in this. But 20% of every job you go to? Hell, that's a lot of money in plumbing. So I was none the wiser. Eventually, I found out that my paychecks weren't having any tax taken out of them. So I asked my boss, why am I not having taxes taken out of my check? To which he replied, when we switch you to commission, you're a subcontractor now, you're 1099, you gotta be making so much bank now, bro. Didn't sign a 1099 form, but okay. As the time went on, I started working 90 hours a week with no break. If my phone was turned off and the office folk tried to reach me, I couldn't. They would take money out of my paycheck. The phone bill? never get paid. There would be days where I wouldn't make a single dime because the boss would mess something up in our system. We also had no heat in our vans and when Neat got up to minus 14 outside, his words to us were, go buy a freaking blanket. I can't afford repairs like this right now. While he is in Florida on a cruise with his whole family. So like anyone else, I just up and quit. True that. When I left, I asked for my checks. I was on three of them for the weeks I worked, but my boss wasn't ready to give them up yet. You screwed me over, and now I'm going to screw you over, he said when I asked why he wasn't going to pay me. I offered multiple times for him to just meet me so this wouldn't have to go any further. He refused. I took to r slash legal advice, blast them, and asked what I should do. The response led me to LARA, Department of Licensing and Regulatory Affairs, to file a wage claim to get my money. But on top of that, I filled a report with them stating the company doesn't pull permits, which is required to, when replacing people's plumbing. So they sent over an investigator to check this claims out. I then went to the IRS to find out about this whole tax ordeal. I filled the proper paperwork to have the RS check and see if I was misclassified as a 1099 employee when I should have been a W-2 employee since they weren't taking taxes out. Sure as hell, I was wrongfully not getting taxes taken out of my checks, so the IRS sent an investigator of their own. Now at this point, I see on my phone that I still have their email address linked to my Google account, so I do some snooping. It turns out they haven't paid city taxes in over six years and that the office manager, a woman that has verbally abused me time and time again, collects his ability through the state but still collects a 1.5k paycheck from the company every week. You can badass I send it in with the IRS. Screenshots included in my email. This is how all unfolded. I have a friend that still works or rather worked for them at the time and he told me about the investigators coming in. Lara fined them upwards of 50000 for failing to produce the proper permits for work that was performed. They also paid me what the company owned me with interest since I waited over a month for these checks. On top of all this, the IRS made them pay for my taxes at the end of the year, took away the office manager's disability, audited them because they haven't paid taxes and find them for each employee they did this to. At this time as well, all of his fleet vans broke due to wear and tear. This resulted in the company closing. When he asked me why I did all of this, my response was simply, you screwed me over, I screwed you over. Added, I did say a W-2, 
but they never gave me any tax forms at the end of the year and told me to fill out a 1099 instead of give me my W-2. Added 2. I'm not the best with tax form names. I signed one when I first started that stated I would be receiving a W-2 at the end of the year. Sorry for the confusion. The next post called how I ended up with my boss's job. I was working for an advertising agency, a pretty big one. I had an unethical manager. Well, when I started out, I had a manager who was one of the most unethical managers I've ever dealt with. He'd order his sales reps to do things that would increase his bonuses, which are based on margins. Example, say a client decides to buy product XYZ and their spend was $2,000 a month, he would want the agent to put up products A, B, C and keep the spend at $2,000, even though the client didn't agree to that. Fact is, the clients generally wouldn't notice, but if they did, it could cost you your job. I was a guy who refused his demands. He would tell me to cheat the client and I would refuse. He would get mad, I wouldn't care. This went on for quite a while. Now, there is something I don't tell people very often. I live in a one-party consent state, which means so long I'm aware a conversation is being recorded, I can record it without informing the other party. I had just upsold my largest client, making him even larger, but I didn't sell the products my boss wanted me to sell. He demanded I switched things around. I refused. I told him I sold the client XYZ that we agreed to. I'm not going to change that without the customer's permission. His exact words were, screw the client. This is our largest client. I need him on ABC or I'm not going to make my number. I'm sorry, but you and I both know ABC isn't right for this client and that's why he didn't buy it. You're fired. If you can't follow instructions, you're fired. After confirming he was dead serious, I said, if you do that, I'll have your job by the end of the month. I went home, I didn't think he'd go through with it. Sure as hell, next morning I'm locked out of our systems. I call tech support and get told I've been fired. So who do I call? I call our regional vice president and tell him I have several recordings I think he should listen to. Remember. My boss ordering me to do unethical things was not common, so I met up with the RVP and played six different recordings that I had saved showing my manager was pushing his agents to break the law. To which my RVP leaned back in his chair and let out a sigh, knowing he had to fire my manager. Having a sales manager that is forcing his reps to break the law is just bad business, at which, which point I asked for my job back. He agreed that I would get my job back and asked me to take a week off and call him on Monday. He told me he'd talk to payroll and make sure I got paid for this week as well. FYI, he fulfilled all his promise with me. Although I missed a payday but got back pay later, so I was fine with that. That Monday, I come into our Monday morning meeting in which the RVP was there. He informed my entire team that my boss had been fired and why. He also mentioned that if anyone wanted to apply for his job, there was now an opening. So I applied for and after three rounds of interview, got my promotion. Sure as hell I was right, I did have my boss's job by the end of the month. It was glorious the first day walking into his office and sitting in his nice big comfy chair. The last post of today is called My Boss Who Tried to Sleep With My Wife. Disclaimer, I honestly think this is more better revenge than pro revenge, but this fits the rules here more than it fits the rules there. I also think it's petty because we didn't have one final cup the grace against him. Still with me? Here's the story. The year is 1995. There's me, who I'll name Kevin O'Malley. I don't hide who I am in the internet, but I'm not gonna make this and slash r slash t-i-f-u by doxing myself and getting banned. There's my wife, who we'll call Alice O'Malley, and my boss, who we'll call Mark Green, who she never met. Alice and I work in Seattle for a computer store. I was 20 and we had two kids. I was teaching for them. 
you name it. Word, Word Perfect, Excel, Quattro, Access, Quark, Photoshop. Basically, every single thing that existed at the time. Alice was doing inside government sales. We got job offers in Dallas and at the corporate HQ. I would be training at the flagship store down the street and she would be doing major government accounts. Because I was young and hadn't finished a university degree, I had trouble getting certification to teach in Texas. My manager told Mark all about me, but he didn't really pay attention. When I got there, he quickly realized that it wasn't legal for me to teach the public since I didn't have a TEA certification. He also decided he'd rather have someone else. However, I was well connected within the company and was friends with people far above him. He tried to drag his feet on my TA certification as my sponsor. I could get it. I had enough college and work experience, but he was trying to force me to quit. Mark goes to a big convention in LA for government sales as we sold training to the government as well. Alice, being government, else has to go. The company has gotten rooms for everyone at the same hotel. The first evening, I get a call from my wife. This guy was trying to touch me on the elevator. He was propositioning to me, touching me and cornering me. You gross. Well, you're a big girl. Tell him to screw off. Knee him in the balls or something. I will if I see him again. I thought nothing of it. That was that. A few hours later, I get a call from my wife. She seemed pleased with herself. I could hear her smile beaming through the phone. Kevin, you never guess what I did. I'm somewhat perplexed, as I'm thinking she won the lottery or something. Uh, what did you do? You know your manager, Mark? Yes, yes, Alice. Of course I know Mark. He's the bane of our freaking existence. He's threatening our ability to be able to live. Screw this guy. What? In the most serious tone I had ever heard out of her, she says, Mark is a guy who's hitting on me. I pause and say, oh, so what happened? Alice says, well, I was at the bar and he comes up to me and I'm sitting there with my name tag, having a drink and talking to Karen, my co-worker. He comes up and starts touching me, fondling me, touching my ass. I tell him to stop. We're all wearing name tags from the convention, but he wasn't. He looks at mine and says, Oh, Miley, and starts to pause. She goes on. I ask him what his name is. He says, Mark, Mark Green. I instantly figure it out. I say to him, don't you know my husband? And he looks kind of dejected. Kevin, Kevin O'Malley. And his face turns white as a ghost and he leaves. I say to her, go tell Virginia, the train director, right now. Go tell her right now. Virginia is a friend of mine because I created and developed the first internet instruction course for us in 1994, and we marketed it to the entire company. It was really successful and part of the reason I had a name for myself in the company. Alice goes and finds Virginia, she tells him how I kept touching her and hitting on her and didn't take no for an answer, how he was dragging his feet on my TA certification how he didn't know who he was hiring and failed to tell us this was even a problem. And Virginia calls me and I explain all of this. Virginia is an old school feminist and the only female executive. Older lady, she was not impressed. Mark returned early from the conference. My TA certification happened quickly as people from up high in the company pulled strings to get it done. Mark was along for our location. Our store was a flagship, we had the biggest accounts, and it was by far the most prestigious. Before he was moved laterally to a different store with no future, my wife used to call me at work and call his direct line to ask for me. 
She would pick me up at work and come in with our kids. He would close his door every time she was there. Every time I asked him for something, I got it. And I made it to a point to ask him for stupid stuff all the time. And then he left for the crappy store and eventually left the company for good. The R slash justice porn element to it was that it really helped my standing in the company, as well as my wife to bust this guy. We both interfaced with the executives regularly. In the end before he left, I ended up in a regional position above him, but laterally. I suppose the irony was that he was trying to make me quit, but they put him in a position with poor bonus structure and he ended up quitting and they didn't have to pay out the severance package of his contract. Well guys, I remember an old saying that says, if you love your job, you don't have to work in your life. But I'll tell you, some of those bosses, they make you work twice or at least three times what it's worth. I mean, I know you can't have the perfect boss, or if you do, you're one of the lucky few, but come on! I mean, there should be a limit for everything, and those people just abuse their power. Now, one last thing, I just want to really thank everybody who have been watching the channel. The channel has been doing great, I've been getting views at all times of the day and night, and I just have to thank you all. So if you haven't yet, don't forget to subscribe and also check Reddit Rockets channel with the link below. You guys have a great day and a great week, and I see you maybe tomorrow, but for sure on Friday with a veteran's point of view. Have a great one and be awesome to each other.